after the news has come, after the bewilderment of the disciples, something amazing happens. I'm not going to read all the verses to you, but you can read it in St. Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. Let me read to you verse 13. And behold, two of them, two of who? Disciples, followers, people of the master. Two of them went that same day. What, what same day? Resurrection Sunday. See, this, this is happening while all of this is fresh in their mind. And they went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. And the intelligent people of the Bible tell me that that's about seven miles. So they're walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And all kinds of things happen that I'm going to refer to here in just a moment. But verse 32 says this. And they said one to another, these two disciples, did not our heart burn within us? I pray God let our hearts burn, burn yes, thank you, Jesus. within us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. And it wasn't indigestion. <laughs> no. It was the spirit yes. of the risen Lord. Yes. Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us, by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures. This same day as Resurrection Sunday. Thank you. And this walk by these two disciples I'm sure was lonely and confusing and they were very sad and despairing but at the same time they were very thoughtful. This day is important. It's the same day that the women had discovered the empty tomb and then they became the first evangelist and reported it to the disciples who were hid away in fear. Not even in my notes, but I would just take a sidetrack for a moment and tell you, thank God for the women believers. Amen. 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 If you want something done in the church, go to the women. Amen. They've been doing it for years Amen. when the men would sit on the sideline. Amen. These women went and told the disciples. And when they reported it to the disciples, the news that these women brought has been received with skepticism and idle talk. Cleopas and the other disciples had heard the news, and yet they were <clears throat> perplexed. Well, that should not surprise you. Here we are a little over 2,000 years later and mankind is still perplexed by an empty tomb. <laughs> Can I tell you, it's the only tomb of any leader and religious leader in the world that is empty. The others are still full with the body, but I'm telling you, the angel said, he is not here, he is risen. Yeah. I will never forget sitting in, in the garden of the tomb, listening to our guide for that particular part in our trip to Jerusalem. 
And he tells us all kinds of stuff as we sat there and, and sitting in this small place. Of, if, if a Holy Land trip does anything, it makes you realize the closeness of everything. I'm sitting here in the, in the garden where our guide is four, I think it was four or five rows of folded chairs in front of me and there's a fence right here and you look up right here and it's what they call Galgotha. And he goes through all of this big spiel and he said, now just before you go down to the tomb area, he said, I must tell you now, please, don't go down there and be disappointed. He said, because I must tell you, when you get there, you're going to find he is not there. <laughs> every, every summer, back in the little home area where I'm from, they have what is called graveyard working. And in, in, in all the, the cemeteries down south, some of you may be familiar with it. Years ago, they would, they would all come together on the same day and bring a picnic lunch, and they would all clean the cemetery and maybe even bring out some fresh flowers if they could afford any. It was called graveyard cleaning. They may even have a small service there. Well, now the, the cemetery has become affluent and they hire somebody to take care of the cemetery and keep it up. And all they do is come together now with a big potluck dinner under a pavilion that they built and have a small church service as well. They do it every year. How many in this place at one time or another, you've been to a cemetery to visit the grave of a loved one. We all have. Mm -hmm. This that I know of is the only instance <coughs> where somebody was dead and buried and you never hear one word about any of the disciples after Resurrection Sunday, you don't ever hear anything about any of the disciples or followers of Christ going back to that graveyard. <laughs> because they knew he wasn't there. That's right. Why waste your time when they know That's it. he's not, not there. there? That's right. But yet they couldn't understand it. And even now, society doesn't understand it. And all those, these disciples were perplexed. We need to be reminded of the words that the songwriter penned when he said, you don't need to understand. You just need to hold his hand. Amen. You don't ever need to ask the reason why. You don't have to understand it. You just have to accept it and understand that the key yes. is not there. Yes. You know, uh, you you may have never followed any of this stuff, but but back in the day there was a there was an entertainer by the name of Elvis Presley. <laughs> Anybody ever heard that name? Yeah. His, his, I, man, I was so disappointed the first time I went to Memphis and drove past his mansion. <laughs> My Lord, wasn't no more of a mansion than nothing. Relatively small house. There are houses all over this area bigger than Elvis's mansion. But one of the things that happened when he was entertaining, when his show got over, and he'd walk out of the light and back to the back of the stage, his announcer would come on and say this. Ladies and gentlemen, the king has left the building. Mm -hmm. For 2,000 years, the angels have been proclaiming, the king has left the building. 
He's not in the grave. He's not in the graveyard. He is today sitting at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you and for me. And we don't have to understand it. We just have to receive it through this of all. And they made their way towards Emmaus. Now just think about them for just a moment. Their hopes had been dashed. All of a sudden, they received news that their brain cannot comprehend. They tried to, to sort all of this out. The women, the empty tomb, the angels, the disciples report. It was difficult at the least to accept. You know, it was amazing. But this same scenario grips so many people today. They can't figure it out. Well, for people who are waiting to follow Christ, you're never going to figure it out. That's right. That's why we walk by That's faith. Amen. That's why God established faith in us. Amen. Imagine if you had been with Jesus before his crucifixion, how you would have felt gripped with a total, complete spirit of despair. Mm -hmm. 